Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to have some fun doing a painting challenge. And for, for today's painting challenge, we've got ourselves a space marine. We're going to try to paint some dark angel colours using only three paints, three colours. And here's the three colours that we're going to use. We're going to use a Vallejo Military Green, a Citadel Droogy Violet Shade, and a Vallejo Medium Olive Green. So without further ado, let's start off with the first layer of the military green. So we're gonna just paint a nice thin layer of military green across the whole of the miniature. I'm just gonna leave out the, the weapons and the emblem, the skull and wings off his chest. We're not gonna paint those up, we're just gonna paint up the armor. Um, I cover the whole armor in uh, nice, nice thin layers. As you can see, the, the paint is thin, it's flowing nice and smooth. You want to try and get the layers to be as, uh, as nice as possible, as smooth as possible. There we go, and like I say, we're just going to cover the whole armor in the same color. This color does dry very, very dark, and that's what we want for the start. I mean, he is called a Dark Angel for a reason. And there you go, that's what your first layer should look like. Nice, dark, military, green base coat. This will allow us to get in a nice, uh, like a darker element for more, more contrast with our shade. This may seem like a little bit of a strange choice using a uh, droogy violet on top of a green, but the contrast between the purple and the green, especially in some lights when you've got the model on the, uh, the, the miniature on the tabletop, when that miniature catches the light in certain ways, you find that it'll bring more depth to your miniature than just leaving it with a black shade or a brown shade. It gives that, that slight hint and that slight tone of a, another colour or an extra colour to it, which can sometimes bring your models to life a little bit more than just seem like a dark, dingy, uh, shaded miniature. And as you see, I just cover the whole miniature in this, uh, in this shade. It's a nice dark shade anyway, it'll get into all of the recesses. You see that I'm using nice straight lines, as I'm showing you there, especially across the larger armor parts. Um, I'm just using the straight lines across the, the larger panels so that the paint doesn't pool in undesirable positions. So you want the paint to, to, to run down the model rather than sit on those larger panels. But it doesn't matter too much, we're going to paint over them again later anyway. And there you go, once your shade is dried, this is what you should be left with, a nice darker dark green. So with this now your dark purple shade should be sitting in all of those recesses, adding much much needed contrast to the miniature. So the way that I painted this back up is again, we've thinned down that military green, so that dark green. It doesn't look as dark now that you're placing it on top of that shade. And I'm just going to repaint all of those panels back up. Now this can be quite time consuming, but it is very rewarding and it can be a fun little project to paint as well. And that's all I'm doing is avoiding all of the recesses. So you're avoiding all of those places and all of those parts where the shade has settled into all of the gaps. Take your time, there's no rush, and just make sure that you don't hit those recess points. So as you see, I'm just trying to be as careful as I can around the knee joints, and also those little um, square panels and those little those little bits where the, the shade has just sat in um, and, and darkened them. Again, like I say, make sure that your paint is nice and thin so that it flows nice and easily onto the miniature. Take your time, go over it once, go over it twice, 
until you get the color that you're happy with and the desired effect that you are uh, happy with. And again, you can see that this paint will darken. Uh, it, it dries darker than it looks. So when you paint it and it's wet, it looks quite bright. Uh, but it will darken down quite a bit when it dries. So yeah, just follow those panels, follow those armor sets, a little bit at a time, step at a time. Like I say, take your time and have some fun with it, really enjoy it. Same again, just around the belt. We're just going to add that military green back, avoiding all of those recessed points. The good thing with having the paint watered down is if you do make a mistake and you do end up with a bit of paint splodging just into one of the recesses, just use a damp brush to just brush it away and you'll be back to... You'll be back to where you started, back to how you want it. Same thing all over those armor panels, armor plate in, across the hand, across the uh, the wrist areas, all of the arm parts, the arm guards, the shoulder guards. That's all you want to try and do is just leave those recessed gaps. the more layers that you put onto this the more you will build that color back up and the more that that color builds up the more uh, of a neutral tone it becomes here we go just leaving those recesses again you see This is probably the first time I've painted a Dark Angel since I was about 14. I'm going back a fair few years now, when I was much, much, much younger. Took a long, long break from the hobby, but back now and enjoying painting once again. And there you go, once you've done your military green uh, tones back up, this is uh, sort of what you should be left with. You should have something that looks similar to this. Or depending on how many layers you've done, you know, you might have a little bit of a different tone to it. But this is similar to where, where we should be. And so for this, then, we're going to move on and we're going to start with those highlights. And we're going to get those highlights just across the edges. Full disclosure on this model, I have never edge highlighted a miniature like this before. This is completely brand new to me. So this is... This is um, th this is a fun project. It's always nice to try something different. It's always tries to try. Always nice to try new things and come up with new things because it pushes the boundaries on what your painting knowledge, um, or way in your painting knowledge is. So it's always nice to try different things because you can learn new things and find things that you might say oh I enjoy painting that I'd rather paint that on a certain type of model or try it with different colors you know it's always good to expand your horizons and try new things don't be afraid of it just take your time and with this we just pick in the edges the very very outer edges so we leave in that military green as the mid-tone and we just pick in the extreme edges with this and again this looks a lot lighter than it is when it's wet it does dry down a little darker but the whole idea is that this is like an extreme edge highlight again because we're only working with three colors you kind of just have in a mid-tone a dark tone and a highlight 
and that, that, that can be quite difficult to work with in some ways. So this edge highlight is going to make that highlight pop so much that the contrast, hopefully, between the shade and the highlight should be really, 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 really nice. So for the edges, you just want to take your time again and just run your brush across the edges. Um, what you can do is if you notice my edges, the green edge highlights that I've done are way, way too thick. So what I've done is I'm going back to the military green and I'm just picking those edges that are too thick and painting the mid-tongue back in. So I'm reducing the extent of those edges so those edges look a lot neater and so that those edges don't take up so much of the, uh, the area of the miniature. Because with these edge highlights, you just want them as like a small pin highlight. So you don't want to cover too much of the miniature. Could probably have done with using a smaller brush for this. Um, but either way, it's, uh, it's working out well for me. Just picking up some, some real extreme sort of details. Trying to leave a few gaps as if like his, his gas mask or his mask itself has some ridges to it. You'll notice sometimes I go to paint and the paintbrush doesn't even touch the miniature. Um, I don't know whether that's fear of getting paint on the miniature or if it's just that my eyesight is that bad that I don't realize I'm missing half of the time. <laughs> But again, you just want to follow all of the edges, all of the lines. Um, it's up to you how much of the lines you want to do with this. There are people out there that paint the edge highlighting around the feet of the Marines. Myself, personally, I don't, um, I don't enjoy painting around feet. So I tend to leave the feet to mid-tone. A lot of the time you'd end up putting things like the... Um, dirt or grime or weathering across the feet anyway so it doesn't matter too much if you miss out on parts because you can always cover it with um, something more fun like a little bit of dirt or mud anyway as you see that that edge highlight there is way way too thick so we'll go back and we will recover that with a mid-tone later same as the one on his uh, forearm up here that's a little thick for me so I would end up uh, going back and repairing that with the military green uh, mid-tone so that it doesn't stick out too much now. This edge highlighting has actually been quite a fun little project, um, something different. Um, as I said, I've never painted like this before, so painting like this does give a new perspective on the sort of shape of your miniature, especially something like a, a Space Marine where you've got so many edges and so many um, bold points sticking out of the miniature, which allows you then to really, really sort of um, go to town and, and pick those areas out. And as you see, I'm, I'm just repainting the mid-tones here so that I'm thinning down those thick edges because I don't like how thick those have gone. I want it to be more subtle. Same again, just mid-tone across the top of the helmet, across the, the helmet's Mohican. Um, just to thin those lines so that we don't get it too, too wide, too extreme.
Same again, like I was saying with your edge highlighting. Some people would like to edge highlight the inside of the kneecaps of the Space Marines as well. Personally, I don't edge highlight the inner kneecap because I edge highlight the outer kneecap. I don't think the inner side needs it as well because I think if it was too many lines all around the leg, uh, you know, all around the armor panels, the knee pads, everything like that, it might get a bit convoluted, it might look a bit too busy, it might be too much. So sometimes it's nice just to leave a flat point. And of course, with your Space Marines, a lot of people like to paint uh, their chapter colors and uh, their regiments on the knees and the shoulders. So if you leave the knee uh, the, the one flat color that you want, when you put your decals or your paint jobs or your um, company banners on there, it will look uh, stand out a lot, lot more because you've got your mid-tone and your highlight would obviously be your decal then. So it will look a lot smarter that way. So once you've gone through an edge highlighted, this is what you should end up with. It's something like this. I mean, you could spend a bit more time than I have and you can really go to town on, on pinning those highlights and getting those edges really, really smooth. Um, again, like I say, this is the first time I've tried to paint like this and it's been really, really fun. It's been really, really interesting. And if you haven't painted like this before, it's worth trying just to see if it um, gives you like a different perspective on the miniature. Um, but all in all, it's a fun challenge. This has been done with just three paints. So this has been done with just a dark base coat, with a shade, then a return to the base coat, then an edge highlight. And that's, that's all I've done. That's all we've done. You've got sort of a really nice dark angel looking uh, chapter, dark angel looking color, really nice sort of tones to it with three colors three colors so I mean if you if you paint in sort of 40 miniatures up you're painting a whole chapter uh, just three colors I mean that could work and, and the, the, the purple the droogie violet has worked out absolutely lovely as well as a as a tone so not only is it shading it's giving you a nice tone as well well as always my friends thank you very much for joining uh, for joining me in this this painting challenge um, I hope you enjoy and, and have fun painting